Hi, I'm Johnny Gears, and welcome to this episode of the History of Victory Church. In today's episode, we will look deeper into the challenges of starting and planning a church. With the goals to reach lost souls here in College Station, Pastor Keith Castleberry and his wife Melissa share their process that led them to the founding of the church. We hope you enjoy this episode, and we'll share it with someone you love. God bless. Previously, we saw your formative years and God's hand at work on both of your lives. Now, we're in the year 1999, 2000, 2001, just before starting Victory Church. What were some of the initial signs that led you to the call to start Victory Church here in College Station, Texas? Well, in 99, we had gone to North Carolina to work at the church there, the one your dad started. And... Um, just kind of sold all my business and sold our home, sold everything just about, uh, moved in a, uh, not a U-Haul, but moved everything up to North Carolina. Didn't really have a role or a title, just went to work at the church, not not knowing what God was doing, had no clue. And, uh, but it was funny because once we got there, you know, it was it was all more or less physical work on, on my part mostly, because it was just painting the church and, you know, adding that little room on the back and, uh, knocking doors and ride, driving the bus and working full time. Working full, yeah, I worked full time at an air conditioning company. In fact, I went from owning a business to working for another business, and the pay was horrible. But um, that worked out. I met some really neat people there in North Carolina. And anyway, we was there 14 months, and felt like it was time for us to come back home and uh, or come back to Texas because we we had a time frame there that we expected to be there. And uh, so we come back to Texas. I went to work for my dad, worked in Nacogdoches, uh, doing m- m- more or less major mechanical type work, uh, uh, schools and stuff like that. And then we went to church in Nacogdoches, uh, past Crosswhat there. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, lived in Lufkin, I think. Is that right? We lived in Lufkin. And um, so that was kind of where we kind of thought, well, we'll just settle here. And I was in obviously managing man, my dad's business, and uh, we was there for um, eighteen months at at, at Past Cross Watts. And so during that time, though, there was just a real burden on my mind and on my heart still uh, for, I guess, really mainly what we used to call home missions. Now it's called North American missions, and. Um, I would, we would travel. We went to Church in a Days, went to several of those, and I did air conditioning work for them and um, was asked to preach a few places, not anything major. Um, I forgot to say, I forgot to say that while we were in North Carolina, really a neat thing happened. We were at a conference and uh, a brother Matthews, Pastor Matthews came up and talked to me and said, hey, I want you to come and preach for me. And I'm like, I had no clue what he was talking about, come and preach. But uh, we went, and God really started to work. One thing led to another, and I got my minister's license in North Carolina. That was before we come to Texas. So back in Texas, I uh, preached a little bit. I remember Brother uh, Minton, Pastor Minton, he asked me to come up there all the time. Such a <laughs> kind man, because I had no clue. <laughs> anyway, um, during that time, we were doing Church in the Days, went to Harker Heights. Remember that? Yes. Went to Harker Heights, and uh, in fact, my son and my daughters, they were about eight, seven, and probably three. And um, on the way up there, we went one way, because it was not a straight shot from Nacogdoches or Lufkin to Harker Heights. And on the way back, we came through College Station, or Bryan College Station, and we drove through, went through the middle of town, and uh, stopped there at Sonic. And we were sitting there, and and I just kind of got this this thought in my mind, I guess. I don't know. It was, this place is amazing. And, uh, I, I, you know, just kind of started feeling a burden, just unusual thing. Most of these things that I'm talking about are unusual because I wasn't used to thinking like this. I wasn't used to uh, acting like this. I was always more or less focused on making a living and, and providing and, of course, you know, building a business because I was always independent. And um, so we were at Sonic and uh, we left and went back to home to Nacogdoches. And that just kind of kept, that college station just kind of kept rolling in my mind, rolling in my heart. And um, 
our pastor, Preston Crosswhite, on, I think it was Easter Sunday or something in that time frame, said, uh, after church today, we want you to go out to eat with us. Well, I didn't, I didn't know that the um, North American Missions Director for Texas District was going to be there. And uh, we went to eat, eat after, after church, we went to eat. And uh, he kind of leaned over and he said, well, uh, Brother Casper, when are you going to start that church? And I was like, you know, it's kind of funny you say that. I've been thinking about, and I said College Station. He said, wow, uh, that actually is one of the most recent towns that we put on our radar to, uh, it needs a church. And so he said, why don't you pray about it? So we came back to College Station. Uh, I'm telling the whole story. She's just shaking her head. I hope that means she's, that means I'm telling the story right. Uh, we came back to College Station, uh, I don't know, a few weeks later. And walked into Steinmart and, of course, ladies, oh, men's, actually, department store. And when we walked in, my my middle, da- my oldest daughter said, uh, Dad, I need you know, his restroom. And I said, well, there it is. And Or I know I said, ask this lady. She said, you ask her. And I said, no, you ask her. Because I always pushed my children to be a little bit more vocal, a little bit more uh, unafraid, more bold. And so she asked this lady that was standing behind the clothes rack. And the lady pointed to the right direction. And I'm standing behind her. And I said, I said, well, ma'am, do you live here? And she said, yes. I said, do you like it? And she said, well, actually, no. And I'm like <laughs> kind of heartbroken because I'm thinking we're, I mean, I'm feeling this call to College Station, not really knowing that, but I'm feeling this burden for College Station. And then I asked her if she liked it. And she said, no. I'm like, oh, no, why? And uh, she had an excuse. And I'm going to go ahead and tell the excuse. But she said, well, there's, you know, racism here. And uh, it was a, a beautiful uh, African American lady, and uh, I I just boldly, and I didn't even really mean to. I just said, you know, I find that uh, the when you focus on racism, it's because you're not right with God. You've not been living for God. And she just kind of shocked, and she said, "Are you serious?" And I said, "Yes, I believe that when you're living for God and in the church, racism is not even doesn't even matter." And she said, well, what kind of, what, I said, I'm going to come here and start a church. You need to come to our church. She said, well, we'll see. And I said, well, uh, you know, she asked me what kind of church it was. And I said, a Pentecostal church. She said, I know Pentecost. I said, uh, well, have you ever heard of a United Pentecost church? She said, I know a United Pentecost church. She said, I spent, I think it was 15 years mm-hmm. in San Antonio at another pastor's church in the United Pentecost church. And she'd been backslid for like five years. And I'm like, oh, my word, lady, you know, you've got to come to church. We're going to come here and start a church. And I felt I kind of a, a kind of at that moment, I felt this confirmation that that we're supposed to be here. And uh, she kind of raised her eyebrows and said, well, we'll see, you know, like I'm going to come or not. I'm not sure about that. Literally, it, uh, we come here and, and I'm just going to tell this story part. Took us five years to get her to come to church for the first time. That was that was hard because I always thought that, you know, she'd be one of our first people, but she wasn't. So that was my perspective of the, the, the you know, 99 to getting here. Right. I think that's, that's my best explanation. Right. right. And, and what I remember is uh, during that time before we, before we got here was uh, you were, you know, you had such a huge burden to do something. So whatever church we went to, we just did whatever the pastor yeah. wanted us to do. Uh, when there was an opera preaching opportunity, you took it. Yeah. Uh, if there was working on a church or building, fixing something, we just, we just did whatever. Yeah. And uh, also you had this map and you had um, marked out all the towns that needed uh, a church that had so many people in it. I think it was seven sixty thousand or seventy thousand. I forget now. And so College Station was one of those towns. Yeah. So when we went to Harker Heights, that was on your radar. Mm-hmm. So you said instead of going straight home, let's go through Bryan College Station yeah. and and check it out because that's one of the towns that that is you know has so many people with only so many churches or whatever. So we did that and we just. We, you know, we had never been through College mm-hmm. Station before. Mm-hmm. It was our first time. I wanted to go where the souls were. That was my motive right. for that. You, it wasn't. Your motive was as me, more souls to reach for the gospel. Right. And, and so um, we did that. And um, also, I remember um, personally uh, that year or what, before we got here uh, of camp meeting, 
And I was just really praying and asking God, you know, is this really what you want us to do? Because God knew we want, we would do whatever God wanted us to do. Our heart, we were willing because God had saved us yeah. from so much. I mean, we were, we were deep in I mean, me, me mostly. Deep, deep, <laughs> deep trouble. You know, I, I remember telling my uh, Pastor Macy one time that I said, Pastor, I feel like I'm in such a deep hole. And every time we are about to crawl out of it and see the light of day, something happens and we slip in, back right. down. And and he would say, just keep climbing, just keep climbing. And, yeah. and we did. We just kept on. And God saw that. And I, I know his mercy and his grace. <laughs> but uh, so oh anyway, I was praying, just asking God, God, is is this what you wanted to do? Because I don't want to go do anything that's not his will. Because I know we'll just fall flat. And, and I think and, in a way you doubted what I was feeling in a way. I just, you, was you fearful. Know, yes. Yeah. And so anyway, God spoke very clearly to my heart and uh, he said, never underestimate me. Right. And those words have kept me whenever you was willing to, whatever, let's do this, do something crazy that I yeah. thought, oh, you know, uh, God would speak back to my heart and never say, understand. never underestimate me. And uh, so that was something beautiful that I will always cherish uh, about that time that before we yeah. moved here. And, um, and it, it was fast and furious, yeah, but it was. it was a it was a um, a great ride, great journey. Yeah. It was it was really confusing at times because there was times there to where, you know, you want the you want the wealth and the security and the stability of a job and a home and all that. And we were, I really wanted you to have that. That's what I really wanted. But and there was there was offers for us to come and take a church here, take a church there, and it was always like. It just never matched. It we never were such novice. Not many people. Nobody would want us. us. <laughs> and that's kind of a in a carnal way. That's kind of the reason why I thought, well, I'm going to have to start a church that's because right. nobody would want me. Number one, I'm a novice, and number two, I'm kind of a little unusual. Exactly. So uh, fast forward and all that, and so God knew right where we God needed knew. to be and in the town we needed. And to be. I just kept following. Mm-hmm. We didn't settle. We didn't say, well, this by default. It was just like, Lord, whatever, 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 mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, and like like you said, I did the air conditioning work everywhere I could, anywhere I could, not just air conditioning, plumbing and painting and you name it, yeah. whatever I could do. Y'all mentioned a little bit about the planning. Could you go into detail? What was your planning process in starting the church? Did you have a business plan? Uh, and what goals did you have? Yes, I've. I'm always kind of looking ahead and making lists and having goals. That's just kind of my, I guess, part nature, part nurture. I'm not sure. Um, when I was younger, I went to school thinking I was going to be a business owner. And so all of my education was towards owning a business. Well, most of it. I'll get into that later. But um, I had a list. And like like my wife said earlier, we had um, kind of I, my burden was I want to go where the souls are. Where's the greatest need? That's that was my focus. It still is my focus. And um, so we made a list of all we made a, I laid out a map. I put a highlighter. I did um, pink, I believe, on all the, the, you know, the old paper maps, pink on all the ones that there was churches and then yellow where there wasn't a church or it was a need for a church in a large enough town. My criteria was, I think, 70 or 75,000. And so that was the first thing. But then I also knew. Uh, because of being in business for so long and, and around business so long, I knew that marketing was a big thing. I knew it had to be uh, something that we saw from the world's perspective. What is this coming into town? Who is this coming into town? So once we felt confirmed to come to College Station, we, of course, went through all of the um, protocol, the proper protocol with the district, with our elders, uh, with our pastor, um, some, some, uh, not, not our pastor and, and elders, of course, but some of our family and friends were like, are you serious? You know, they were kind of crazy. They're like, y'all are crazy. But we, we moved and, uh, we had been to college station at that point. Uh, we only knew our realtor. Uh, I had preached enough to get my license and to, um, you know, maybe another, maybe another 10 or 15 times. So maybe 30 or 40 times I'd preached just enough to get my license and uh, didn't didn't know anybody, knew our realtor. 
And uh, so we we decided we're going to move to College Station. And we, third trip here was looking for a house. Um, so strange, didn't, you know, it's just the way things worked out. But anyway, the point is, we got here, bought a house, and my perspective still is we should buy or, or at least find a rental building for the church because I didn't want it to be in my home. I wanted the church to be in a building, a storefront, something that people could see. This is not a fly-by-night. This is not something that's temporary. Um, and I wanted it permanent looking. So that didn't work out because, uh, and maybe God knew you needed the nest because we found a house first and it was within our price range and we bought it. Little house, 1,200 square feet, I think. And um, so our first service, June the 3rd, we moved here May the, we closed on the house May the 15th and moved here the week of June the 3rd. And June the 3rd, I don't think it was even, in fact, I know we weren't even fully unpacked. We had church and um, had the little the little bar and the living room and the breakfast room to the left. And during that week, we got a phone call that said, hey, don't you know, um, one of one of the college students that's here at AM was from our original church back when we was growing up. Mm-hmm. And so we, I, I don't know how we got a hold of he, him. He worked in the mall at a kiosk. That's right. And we went to the mall and met him there. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. I forgot about that. That's neat. Mm-hmm. So we met him, invited him to church. And so our first service was my, my family, my wife and I, and our three children, 10, 9, and 5, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so we had our first service with him and the next Sunday he wasn't there, but we had a little nine year old girl that, uh, our children met Mm -hmm. next door. She came to church. So we, we had a six again. And then the next service, it was like, I think it was the next one or the third one, I forget, third or fourth. We had both of them there. That was incredible. And then we met a family. We was at a shoe store and met a family, invited them. Uh, just one thing after another. But during that, for, we were in our home uh, about a month and a half, about six weeks. And I found a office building about a mile down the road, a little bit less than a mile. We could probably walk there if we needed to. And it was next door to a dental, a dentist and uh, in, a, in an office complex. So I, I called the people, uh, the last name's Homeyers, called them and I asked them if they would lease it or rent it to a church. And they said, sure, you know, and I said, what's the rent? And she said something like twelve or fourteen hundred dollars a month. And I'm like, you know, that's that's way too high. I said, we can't do that. And she said, Well, let's meet over there and talk about it, which was really a open door. I didn't know it. So we went and sat down. And I remember we sat literally sat on the floor in that foyer mm-hmm. and talked. And she said, Well, you know, uh, I don't know what to even tell you. We would we wouldn't mind renting it to you, but we don't even know where to start. And I'd already figured in my mind, I need to, I need to pay 400 a month for, for rent because that's my tithing and I'll pay the rent and then God will make up for the rest. He'll, I'll do all my tithing and the rent. Somebody else pay the electric bill. Or so she said, I don't even know where to start. You know, she said, I, I guess, you know, we could do, and she's went down to like 800 because it was, I think it was 1200 or 1250, 800, seven, 600 or 400. And I said, I can do 400. And she looked at me and she said, you can do 400. I said, I can do 400. She said, well, if you'll do 400, uh, if you'll pay 400 a month, uh, all I ask is that if we get another tenant that's willing to pay the full price, that you have to move immediately. And I said, that's fine. We can do that. Of course, we had no, no idea uh, that we were going to be there for uh, over a year. Mm-hmm. And she never got another offer. And uh, it, was a, it was a godsend. It was a godsend. We had, didn't have a lot of evangelists because I was a little intimidated. Uh, not a little. I was a lot intimidated because I had, I had no idea what I was doing, number one. But slowly but surely, people started coming. We would, we would meet people. We would invite people. and did outreach. We just, everything we could. I would knock doors and all kinds of things to get to that point. And um, we were in that building and got to run in about 40 people. And uh, it was really s- surprising. I, I, maybe not quite 40, maybe like 30. Yeah, it was, not. but the, the, sanct, the sanctuary was only like 20. I think, in fact, I'm 90% sure it was small. 20 by 20. It was a small room. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of our start. We did, 
uh, um, incredibly, I began to look around because we had about maybe 30 people and I have these, all the numbers written down somewhere. During that time period, we're starting to see a little growth and I'm excited. I'm still doing air conditioning, working for my dad, working for my own self, uh, doing everything I could. I was, in fact, I went to school. The, the, this is another incredible, the lady to the right of us was a, um, dental clinic. The one to the left of us was, or um, I've got it backwards. Anyway, beside us was a mortgage broker. And every time I would go up there, I would go in their office and just greet them and laugh and have a great time. And the lady there uh, asked me, she said, you need to be a, you need to be a salesman. And I'm like, I'm like, I, you know, I'm, I've got, I'm selling Jesus or whatever I said. And we just always kept them cracking up, laughing and stuff. And she finally convinced me to go and get my license to, to service mortgages, sell mortgages. So I went to work for her part-time. I did mortgages. I did real estate um, mortgages. Excuse me, I'm trying to get confused. I did air conditioning. Seems like I did one or two other things during that time period. Uh, whatever I had to do, I just did it. And um, one day, th- this is neat. This is the second stage of this story or third stage, the home, then the little office building. And one day I was out uh, just kind of roaming the country, roaming the city, knocking doors, talking to people. And I was walking through and just inviting people to church. And I walked in this office furniture, not office, um, furniture, home furniture place. Mm-hmm. And the lady was standing there and, and she was helping another customer. And I walked around, I'm looking at this building and it comes to my mind, this would be a great church. It was, it was fan shaped and all that. So she got through with her other customer and I said, um, I said, you need to move. And she looked at me. <laughs> that was my first words to her. She's like, what are you talking about? I said, y'all need to move and this needs to be our church. She needs, this is the perfect church. She said, I'm sorry, but she just, she was dumbfounded. This is crazy the way things work out. I don't know. Anyway, she was dumbfounded. I would tell her to move. And I said, I said, this needs to be our church. She said, well, we just signed a new, just recently signed a two-year lease. We're not moving for two years. And uh, I'm sorry. She said, what kind of church? And I told her Pentecostal. And literally, she come back. I know Pentecostal. I grew up at Pastor Glass's church in Pasadena. And one thing led to another. I invited her to church. And about two weeks later, at the most, I was out right before church. I was picking up people, bring them to church. And uh, my son... Ethan was in the, no, it wasn't. It was, it was another gentleman in the church. He was playing the the bass, practicing. Mm -hmm. And I come back from picking up people. And he said, he's with Castleberry. A lady just come in and she, he said, I don't know who she was. She didn't leave her name or number. And she just said that you can have your building. She left her card with him and said, uh, tell your pastor that he can have his building. He can have his building. That we, we, uh, Anyway, something else happened for them to move into they, a better place yeah. that they really wanted. Yeah. So. And so uh, we had church, and the next day I think I went and visited her, and she gave us our first month free, mm-hmm. our deposit free. Yeah, we just had to take And up we took up her note, her, yeah. her, her note her lease. lease. Uh-huh. And it was expensive. It was expensive. It was right behind Walmart, mm-hmm. right on a very, very attractive location. But at that time, God opened the doors for yes. us to do fireworks, yes. our church. And we were so little, we had to combine with the Hearn Church. Right. And uh, so we would work with them and sell fireworks, and that paid our expensive note. Right. So, right. Yes, it was just incredible the way God. But it, the, the thing that I saw, and I think we saw continually is, you know, my wife always worked in the home, and I always was always outside the home working, working, working. Always busy. You never really had any time off or time free time. We did spend time with family. We did take some family vacations, you know, sacrifice for those kind of things. But the thing that I've noticed multiple times is if you'll be busy about God's business and honor him, he, I think, I know, I don't think, I know he sees that and he'll honor you. And so we've seen that multiple times. And and from my side of the the story, uh, when we first started, we would uh, start in our living room. And we made sure the kids dressed yes. like they were going to back home to church. And, and we, I would tell them, just because we're in the living room, 
you know, doesn't yeah. mean we don't dress for church. We're still yeah. dressing for church. And Lacey had been taking piano lessons. We invested she in was that, really. Probably five, five or six years yeah. old. So uh, they had a program learning to play by ear or, yeah. or something like that with gospel songs. So she started that program and we started her lessons with a, a pastor's wife in town. She started working, um, doing piano lessons. And when uh, that ended, they moved. So um, we would drive to Conroe and yeah. take her and Camille to piano lessons. It was a big sacrifice. It was. I, I can remember rem- that. I can remember that uh, they would charge. It was like ten dollars a lesson, yeah. and, and it seems like nothing. But at that time, it was a it struggle. Was a lot. It was huge because we were just extremely tight on yes. everything. And um, but and then Ethan started guitar lessons. Yeah. So we had uh, Camille. I mean, Lacey would play the piano. And Ethan started out would play a a, a special ever so yep. often, you know. And um, so I, I remember that, you know, and getting to the little when we had the little storefront, yeah, we get there real early, and the kids would clean up, yeah, and uh, make sure the church was presentable for everybody. And I remember telling Ethan one time, Ethan, don't ever begrudge working, working for the Lord. Right. Because he takes care of his people. And that very day I had talked to him about that, this little stray dog ran up to him in the the, the uh, the in the parking lot. And he uh, just bent down to pet it. And and uh and this man walks up and said, Thank you, son, for finding my dog. And he's like, I didn't find your dog. He ran up to me, you know. <laughs> and he said, Well, I appreciate it, and handed him like $20, right. you know. And uh and we were up there working at the church. And when at that, that time, I'm yeah. like, wow, Ethan, that is God yeah. because when he takes care of his people yeah. when you're working for the church. And I know Lacey had to teach Sunday school and uh play the piano and everybody was working. And All hands on deck. So uh, uh it was it was hard. Sweet I remember the memories. Yeah, it was and, uh, great. But it was uh it was a uh you know, looking back, it, it, it was a lot, but we were just excited to be a part of the kingdom and, and to and to do our part. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, and I, I look back and I thought everything has to be excellent because we're working for the king. I mean, the king of kings. He, he is mm-hmm. the king of glory. And we've got to put our best foot forward, you know, and, uh, you know, and we did. We gave God the best that we had to mm-hmm. give. And God has really. I think my, I think my wife is. um has always had the right perspective. And and this, of course, proves it out. She was uh, adamant that our children dress properly, even even we were in the sanctuary, I mean, in the in the living room. Uh, our our facilities were always, not always the biggest, not always the grandest. We never right. had anything never but had best, just four right. walls and some chairs sometimes, but it was always clean. And we we always did our very best. And, and we always sacrificed Look into the future. I, I remember buying that seven hundred dollar piano, mm-hmm. and it was like, "Oh Lord, how are we going to pay for this thing?" And of course, we got it paid for, and God honored that too. But and God and God sent me a lady uh, because at all the previous oh, churches, yes. I was one of the younger ladies, so I never was over anything. So never God sent Becky Hilly to our church, and she showed me how to set a table, how to you know to make things. Mm-hmm. How to greet really guests special, and, to, yes. and and she's always she's just God has blessed her with that talent of whatever you have. She just makes it more special, yeah. and and that was a great blessing to us at that. You know, at that. You know, and and lives. another thing, looking kind of it's kind of like uh, Joseph when before he before he uh, met his family the second time they come down and and he saved their life, and he said. You know, the enemy meant it for evil, but I, God's meant it for good. God sent, I think, Becky and Benton Hilly to College Station uh, 15 years or more before us. And so they had connections. They had open doors. And when they come to the church, you know, we met them and they come to the church. We were here about three months or four months when they started coming. And it was just a breath of, of fresh air and hope. And and really understanding because we we were not floundering we weren't like dog paddling but but we were we're new we're, we're fresh we're green, green. <laughs> we're no idea what we're doing yeah. and yet, yet God sent them and that was a I still honor them to this day great people yes great people. 
Describe your leadership style in the first three years of starting the church. When we first started the church, it was, it was, um, we were immature, we were young, and so we can give ourselves that excuse. Uh, we had goals, we had aspirations, we had desires, but we didn't always have the right method. Uh, kept the message, obviously, but the message method was not always perfect. And uh, I didn't, I never have, and I, I, I didn't then, I don't, I don't now lead with an, an iron fist, so to speak. I don't lead, um, I don't, I want to lead with a transparent, genuine care for souls and their soul is more important than my leadership. So that's kind of, we, we, you know, building the church, even when we was in our living room and in our, in our storefront or the, the office building before we went to storefront, everything we did, we tried to include everybody. We wanted nobody left out. We wanted everybody to have a great time, to enjoy whatever we were doing. Um, it took a while. I'm mean, telling you, it took a long time before we even saw our first soul baptized. It was, it was, it was horrible. I thought there for a while, I was beginning to think, God, did you really call me? Cause I mean, I didn't, I saw no fruit, so to speak. And, uh, I'll get more into that later, but God did have to develop us before he could develop the church. And so we went through our, our little struggles. And I know my wife saw me kind of as a bull in a china closet because I'm always fast forward. But I tried, again, to honor God by honoring those that he gave us. And I was just so, to me, it was a blessing to be given a, a soul. If, if you look at it like this, it was a blessing to be given a soul to care for. And that was a God-given gift. And so we had a, we had a burden to care for that soul. But not everybody sees it that way. And so not everybody would just kind of comply and go along, or you'd have people that just, you know, I mean, it was, it was a small church, very intimate, very close knit. And, uh, but we, we got through it. I think, um, my leadership style has, of course, matured, modified. And, uh, now it's, it's, it's like night and day practically. But back then, I don't know that I had, a, I don't know if I was cognizant of this is the way I'm going to lead. It was just, we've got to get this done. We need this. Uh, we all hands on deck and that kind of thing. Is that what you're, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I think your leadership style, you're not a um, detailed person. So you just yeah. see the big job it has got to get done yeah. and you just, it's like a heart, you know, just get it done. And so she was fixing to say hurricane. No, <laughs> you got to get the herd moving in the this herd, direction. Okay, the herd. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, and I'm the detailed person. Yeah. So while he's just going, I'm trying to pick up and figure out how we're going to do it. And, and uh, so I think it took us a little while to, to, to learn to work together because yeah. it was a, it was a, um, a job and uh, it took us a little, to, a while to get our bearings on yeah. how, do you do this job and get it going, but at the same time, be righteous and, and, mm -hmm. and get it done right. And uh, because it's easy to, to have a movement and just go a direction. And sometimes you can be in the wrong direction, up, going wide going open in the wrong right. direction. And so to get something going, but keep it, keep in the right direction. Yeah. And, and uh, so that, I think that was a challenge for us for, you know, at, at times, and um, I would like to go back and give some details. One of the things we was talking about the business organization or the organization of the, of the church. One of the things that we did was we submitted ourselves to elders, uh, pastors, things like that. They were on our board. We, we incorporated the church, got it, um, you know, insured and all that kind of thing. And then we had our former pastor, two of our former pastors and an elder that we knew that was on our church board. So we kept ourselves kind of submitted to that. We were, we were very, we tried to be, yeah, we tried to be very connected to the district. Mm -hmm. That way uh, we weren't some uh, wild, you know, branch out there doing our own thing. Exactly. Um, made sure our children were very connected in, you know, youth camps and youth exactly. events and youth rallies. And so, 
you know, we, when we talk about style, you know, you're talking about a couple that we was only married 12 years when we started the church. And so you were, we're kind of used to being married and we're kind of used to having children and we're kind of used to having to work hard, but we're not used to building a church at all. Right, right. And so it was, while it was fresh and hard, our desire was to, number one, give God all the glory. And number two, submit ourselves to uh, authority, making sure that we weren't. We wanted to do it right. We wanted to do it right. It was a great desire to do it right. And like my wife said, I'm I'm a big picture person and I'm fast forward. And she's seemed to always be cleaning up after me something. It wasn't, wasn't in a bad way. It was just that when when we talk about, hey, this room needs to be painted, I'm going to go buy the paint that day. And um, she's kind of thinking about it still. Yeah, I'm trying to decide what color, what color. are we going to do, the details. Yeah, yeah the details. <laughs> you got to buy the tape <laughs> to trim yeah. out things. So when we started getting, and this would be, this would go into our leadership style. When we started getting people, and I'll never forget, we were in the, in the storefront behind Walmart, and we got all those students. Mm, and a great blessing. huge blessing. Of course, the Myers family. Yes. Uh, the Crenshaws. I could, there's a list and I probably need to quit doing that. But when we started getting people, we tried, I tried, ignorantly so, but I did try to put people in the right place to do jobs. Those most friendly, we would put them in the four-year to greet. Those that were more detail-oriented, we'd put them on the little laminate that you projected on the wall. Mm -hmm. Those that could sing, we let them sing. Um, you know, and, and it was just a, it was, it was. With all our limitations, right. you know, as far as, yeah, we did, I think we did the best we could with what we had. And, and we're we still tried. connected with most of those yeah. people. The majority of those people were still connected to. There was a few that come and we hated to see them go and they left. And we've not talked to them much since then, but of course they're all over the world because it's a college town. But um, we did try our best, and I really believe God honored us. Um, but I think one thing that you can't neglect here, and this is very important, not only was it important to us to lead the church, which we did to the best of our ability, but we also led our family. And I think the the core of the church, which is your family, our family, yes. the core of the church must be your primary focus leading them. And so to do that, it meant us teaching and training our children, like we said, but it also meant us caring for our children in a way that they weren't neglected in their sense of ability to travel, go on vacations. You know, of course, me and my son, we'd go hunting girls would go shopping, whatever they or they did, you know. We always tried to make sure our children were well-founded, well-grounded in the church. Gave them tools. We gave our children tools. All of our children, as adults, now have tools in their bag of ability now that they can, they can run if we passed away. And that's, really, that's your, when you're, building a business or a church, you want the church to survive or to thrive with or without you. And so that's kind of the focus mm -hmm. of our planning and our goals. Yeah. My last question, what were your greatest blessings in starting the church? I would say our children. They were our greatest blessing. I would say Having our children involved, connected, engaged in the process, and letting them be a part of that. I know that maybe they, looking back, I don't know that they valued it as much as we did, but I think that it was such an honor to have our children and let them see what God could do. And we constantly showed them what God was doing. We prayed. We would, every time, like my, my wife is more better at this than I am, but anytime anything happened, I might have preached it or taught it, but at that moment, she would bring it out. This is a God thing. And so that was, that was, our children were such a huge blessing, not only having them to help us, but having them there to teach them and to show them what God can do. And then um, the, the people that came along beside us that would hold our arms up and help us and strengthen us and, um, you know, you always, you're always going to have what I call knuckleheads in the crowd. 
But when the majority of the people that come to the church are there because they want to help, they want to be a blessing, then you're going to get through it. Uh, You might think otherwise, but you will get through it. And so you've you've got to be, you know, and I, I look at it kind of like this, and I looked at it like this then. You're kind of building a tribe. You know, you're building those that you can trust and depend on. And not everybody is, you know, what, what is the little, the little phrase about the tree? There's some leaves on the tree mm-hmm. and there's some tiny branches that will be pruned out by the storms of life. But there are those solid limbs that are there to produce fruit. And so we ignored, we didn't honor those that caused confusion or problems. We honored those that was there to help us. And that was a big thing. Another, another thing that really helped us and I know it's it's kind of it seems like it's secondary, but it really was primary in my life. Is the the variety of education that I had, and the the my my parents, my mom and dad raised me in a home, and did a great job of it. Of, you know, I'm a, here. I'm a wild. <laughs> I'm crazy. You know, not crazy, but I'm I'm a wild child, so to speak. I'm a little off, you know, out there, and yet they groomed me. And allowed me to be involved in so many things. I was, I was in all their businesses, but then they made sure I was in the youth group and I was in Boy Scouts. And, and, and then when I went to school, I went to college after, you know, I left the home. I went to school. And I wanted to go in business. I just wanted a business degree. And then I wanted real estate. And then I wanted, I remember taking that class. And it, I'll tell you this more later, but I took a class just randomly. I don't even know why. Maybe my handwriting was atrocious and the 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 um, counselor said I needed to fix my handwriting but she gave me a class told me she's like you're going to take mechanical writing and because I, I was born right-handed and changed the no I was born left-handed and changed to right so I was well then I'm like well hey I might want to take an architecture class or drafting class so I took that that comes to play later but the variety even my wife's experience of her heritage of a dad that lived for God, such a huge blessing that, that had pastored a church, even when she was a child from nine to 12, three years they pastored. And that was such a huge blessing. Mm-hmm. And then of course, our families and just, we could go on and on. There are so many blessings. You can't count them all. You cannot count all the blessings, the people, Right. The, 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 that lady that let us come in and she said, you can have your building, you know, right. I'm still in touch with her today. All along the way, God yeah. just sent blessings right when we needed them, right when we were, you know, God, God is good like that. Yeah. He takes care of his people and he knew we were struggling, yeah. but striving. Yeah. And he just made a way. You're going to lose people. Yeah. Like I said, you're going to lose the leaves and the and the right. small branches, or I think that's the right, right way to say. People it. are there for a season, and but that doesn't mean that they're your enemy because they're not. Um, many of those people that have left, like I said, we're still in touch with, but they helped us there for that yeah. time. And sometimes they, they, you know, many. I think everybody has helped us grow in oh, one yeah. way or the other. Whether you know, if God was trying to work to get us in some direction or, yes. you know, he, he sent people in situations in our life that caused us to think hard, to, to search the scriptures, to examine our lives, yeah. or examine ourselves, to, 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 to walk in a deeper walk with Christ. And, um, and that was everyone. I mean, whether at the time we, we were aggravated or frustrated, mm-hmm. you know, but, um, you look back and there was a reason for everything. And, and uh, I truly believe that. Yeah. And even in our sorrow, that was a blessing mm-hmm. because heaven is forever mm-hmm. and this world sorrow is not is our temporary. home right. and we're pilgrims. Right. I remember, I remember changing my mind about, uh, and, and it was a, an intentional, it was just an incredible moment, I think, in my life when um, you're given, you're an authority. You're a pastor. Okay, you're a pastor. That's a huge role. Brother E.L. Holly said, if you're called to be a pastor, never stoop to be the president. Right. So pastoring was such a huge role. And it means authority. It means a lot of things to a lot of people. 
But I remember we were pastoring for about maybe three years and I had somebody come up and ask me a question and I began kind of nervous about it because I never answered that question before. I never studied that question and something, and I don't remember exactly how it happened, but something just changed my mind. Every, every time somebody comes up to me with a challenge or with a question, I want to rejoice in that because that is just a way that God's going to educate me. Mm -hmm. And that's what we began to do. Yes. Um, We've had to start really digging deep and educating right. ourselves. Not offended. I didn't, we didn't get no. offended anymore. It was because like, it was we're like, we're going to be a witness. Right. We got to know what we know, not just right. be obedient, right? but understand. Yeah. And know, that's, that's kind of, deeper. and that's what we've taught for 20 years now. We we're not wanting little robots that are obedient only. We want to raise up people that are sensitive to the power of God, obedient to the word of God, not obedient to us only, but the word of God and understand. And so we've always challenged the church to read their Bible and, yeah. and, um, and tried to do a lot of teaching. I'm, out of the three services that we would typically have on a Wednesday, on, on a week back then, two of them were teaching. Right. right. So, and you're a good teacher. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> anyway, so we had a, but many, many blessings, so many blessings, but uh, I, I don't, I haven't really given it a lot of thought, but I think our first blessing would be our ch children, yes, our past, our education. Yes. Um, those were, and then the people that came along with us, that ran with us, and some of them did literally run with us. Thanks for joining us for that episode of the History of Victory Church. Please join us again next week as we delve into the dynamics of leadership of growing the pastor as well as the church. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. Thanks. And God bless. How many more questions? Quit it.